congratulations once again. And the best of luck to Field Marshal Sir Bernard Montgomery. Following swiftly on our historic pictures of the liberation of Paris, we have received the inside story of the FFI fighting for the freedom of the capital. Right up to zero hour, everything seemed normal. Even if apparently innocent cyclists were carrying final orders for the rising, Paris, on the surface, was evidently still firmly held by the Bosch. Then, as zero hour, the hour to strike approached, the streets became empty and ominously quiet. hush before the storm. Then the storm broke. Paris tore down the hated signs of German rule. For four years they'd suffered a multiplicity of German signs and posters and proclamations. And now at last, before the arrival of help from outside, the people of the city rose to wipe out this humiliation. A movie tone cameraman was among others in Paris, and the pictures that follow, which come from various sources, tell an amazingly vivid and dramatic story. The building of barricades was an opening move in the plan to isolate units of the Bosch garrison. Don't be misled by the lack of uniforms into supposing the Battle of Paris was an impromptu affair. Every man and every woman in the whole great underground organization had precise orders. This wasn't the first time in the history of Paris that the citizens had torn up the streets to build their barricades. But as in the days of the revolution, it was a fight for the liberty of the people by the people. The Ile de la Cité, the oldest part of Paris, an island in the Seine on which stands Notre Dame Cathedral and the Palais de Justice, was to be the heart and brain of the FFI's battle. Near the island is the Hotel de Ville, the city hall. This was used as headquarters. The police, who had previously gone on strike, were now formed into a battle unit. They had as great a desire to rid Paris of the Bosch as any other citizen. The prefect, Monsieur Loisir, is among other chiefs of the FFI, whose leader is Monsieur Bido. Some of them, with their staff, are seen here at headquarters. underground army of Paris, after years of patient training and planning, had gone into action. The Bosch was in action too. He had tanks and all the rest of it, and he fought back, as we shall see. But neither his superior equipment nor his much-vaunted membership of the master race prevented his being beaten by the people of Paris. They fought at the barricades, they fought at the street corners, they fought from windows and rooftops. They fought for Paris. Now is the moment. Helps on the way. Free Paris. Kill the Bosch. That's what the FFI were thinking. Make an end of it now, once and for all. Free Paris. Kill the Bosch. in Paris was no riot, no skirmish. It was a bloody battle, and there were many casualties, many dead and wounded among the people. The FFI had its Red Cross organization in readiness for this moment. Here are some of them in action. Although the whole world knows just how little protection the flag of the Red Cross gives when you're fighting the Hun, that made no difference to the women of Paris. Under fire, they rescued and cared for the wounded with a coolness and a courage that must evoke our utmost admiration.
Many lives were given, much blood was shed by Parisians in their struggle for the liberty of their own beloved city. These are not pretty pictures. This is what happened. Casualty figures are not yet available, but it's pretty obvious that but for the bravery of Red Cross personnel, among whom French women figured so prominently, the death roll would have been immeasurably greater. As you can see for yourselves, all these pictures were taken during the course of the battle, which lasted for several days. While the fighting swayed through the streets of Paris, while the wounded were being taken to dressing stations, everywhere the Bosch was being killed or captured. In ones and twos and in small batches, the Bosch was brought in. What a different picture from 1940. Then he goose-stepped into Paris. Now he's frog-marched into prison. For years, they strutted in the streets of the capital of a defeated France. But now Fritz and Hans have surrendered, not to the overwhelming might of Allied arms, but to the citizens of Paris. There were many terrible scenes during the battle. One of the grimmest recorded by the camera was taken when a petrol lorry caught fire. It's not a pretty picture, but it was a part of the price paid during the Battle of Paris. In the even recorded the killing and wounding of individual Germans. There's one, and if the camera can shoot him, so can the FFI. A Bosch lies in the street. Bullets strike the ground all around him. Finally, he's eliminated, and there's a dash to secure his arms and ammunition. It went on for several days like this, fighting in the streets, fighting from the housetops, fighting at the barricades, fighting to free Paris, fighting to kill the Bosch. 